Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to today's channel. In today's video, I thought I would show you what it looks like to have a bullet journal as an extreme in this. Before we go into any details about that, I need to show you some housekeeping stuff. And that's got I've got a new phone, and it's very different to the one that I used to have. I used to have a Motorola G8, but right now I have a Samsung A25. And so everything about the phones are completely different. This camera is completely different to something I've had before, and the quality apparently is higher, but I don't know if it's going to come out any good. And I don't know about the audio, but I think the audio is supposed to be really good and the downloading and uploading and everything about it is just supposed to be so much better than the old phone that I had. Nothing for me compares to the good old most updated iPhone, but I'm on a budget and my phone broke when I was trying to do things with screen time. And so here we are, we have a new phone. I just hope that it's going to be enough quality for you guys to still continue to watch me. Right, with that said, let's get into the meat of the video. This is my beautiful B6 journal. This is a bullet journal, so it has all the little dots going around. And it has a little pen holder on the side, and this is a pen that it came with. And I absolutely love it. Right up here, I'll show you a close-up in a minute, is something that says Be Right Back Evolving, which is very relevant for me. And I love this thing with all my heart. I was a skeptic of the bullet journal for a very long time. And for me, I thought it was really complicated and I thought that for it to be considered a bullet journal or of any use or practicality, it also had to look really, really pretty. The front of its mysterious wave and the backs with it all its glory. And I thought the inside of the pages had to look absolutely mastery with artist impressions of everything, or at least little doodles. And I'm definitely not a doodle person. I don't do art in any form whatsoever except for colouring in watercolour drawings. That are already pre-made and I also thought that I had to do bubble writing and lots of different coloured stuff and just the whole array of things that were considered to me at the time to be a part of the bullet journal experience so I was really against bullet journaling for a really long time and I really thought the best journal was just a writing down how you feel in a whole scrap heap of emotions on the day that you feel it and that was kind of it and that's what I did for a very long time but it was very rare that I ever finished a proper traditional journal except for if it was like an A6 size which is smaller than this I think it's like half the size and you know that here I never finish a journal no matter how pretty it looked on the outside the outside doesn't really count as much as what's inside and really good quality paper which I think I have with this the brand of this notebook in particular is called Scribbles That Matter I'm definitely not related to them in any way I'm not getting paid to say this or anything like that it's just something that I've kind of want to promote because I've had a really good experience with this journal so with that being said let's have a look inside I really want to show you the things that I use you might think I need a lot of things or that you might need a lot of things to make this really work but I can promise you that's not true I started with the traditional amount of way too many stickers way too many pens and pencils and rulers and rubbers and sharpeners and way too many highlighters I thought I needed more to make it work well, in actual fact, for me and my definitely non-artistic background, simple is best. All I really use is the pen that it comes with, or a different black pen of my choosing, which I really love as well. Five highlighters. I used to have the regular size ones that were really thick. Then I changed to the thin ones. Then I decided I was going to have five little mini ones that were separated. And now I'm at the star. To be honest with you, I kind of don't like any of those choices except for the thin, tall, regular size highlighters. And I think when these run out, and the other ones, because I was mistakenly thinking that this was going to solve my problems, I will just go back to the regular thin ones and let it be. Just because it's small doesn't mean it's necessarily better, and that's been the case with these. I do like ones that are a bit taller, and that's fine. This isn't always the case with bullet journals, but because of this particular brand being about journals and about bullet journals with the Pacific, they gave me this ruler that comes with the notebook. They didn't give it to me. It's just a thing that comes with it anyway. And on the back, they have all these little lines, and it's just a guide reference for, you know, if you want things to be thick, small, big, whatever. Um, I used to use this in the beginning until I found the style that works for me and I only really need it for my 30 day box calendar thing and the rest of the time I don't need it. But I keep it around just in case because this is kind of really handy to have because it's all made out for me anyway. 
When I first started in October with my bullet journaling, I brought a massive pack of sticky notes. I didn't really see the point of sticky notes in journals and in diaries. But when the foster placement used only those before she wrote anything in the diary that she was keeping, I thought that was a really good idea. So that's exactly what I do with these. Anything that I'm not exactly sure I will do, so like any YouTube ideas or any reminders that I need to do that I might not do because that sometimes happens, any appointments that I think I heard right but wasn't really sure, or any maybes that might happen but need confirming later on, I use sticky notes for those and it's been really handy to have because it keeps my bullet journal looking a lot neater than it would be without it. That being said, my bullet journal is not pretty and aesthetic, it's just practical. In the beginning, I started off using stickers and you'll see a lot of stickers in here. But towards the last page within this month really, I've decided that I'm going to be done with stickers and not bother with them because I either bought them because they're really pretty but then the quality really sucked or I thought I would get a lot of use out of something and I didn't or they would give you lots of something and not so much of other things and the thing that had lots of things you wouldn't really touch and the thing that was a bit little you would or they just didn't fit within my lifestyle and my theme and the things that I wanted to write down on my bullet channel so I tried originally to have an A4 journal because I thought I needed all of the space. However, that didn't last long and I really didn't need as much space as I thought I would. And then I went down to an A5 journal. That one broke because my son decided to colour in it and rip it apart. However, the quality of the journal was also really rubbish and A5 was too small for me and my needs. So when I found out about B6 and it having 30 dots, which is kind of what I need for my like monthly like tracking I thought okay that actually works out really well and it's absolutely perfect and it's a brilliant size for me and I just absolutely adore it this one in particular is probably four times the price of the ones that I originally brought and I really don't recommend the ones from Tiger because they're just really poor quality so I have this one now and even though it's way more expensive I'm really happy with it and I'm really glad that I decided to purchase it also this is available in white which for my aesthetic I really love I guess now I will turn this camera around and I will show you what's inside. This is my preference. This is not what you need to have to have a bullet journal and you can take as much info or as little info as you like from it. You can use stickers in yours if you want to, to keep it minimal, really, really minimal. I really would suggest not having stickers because they are such a pain in the butt bum to manage. But if you want them, then, then please, it's still minimalist of you to have stickers that you like. So. This is called the Scribbles That Matter B6 Bullet Journal and I got this from Amazon. I think it was about 30 quid or maybe 20 quid and I absolutely love it. On here, right at the front. And let's have a look inside. So the first page shows you my address, which I'm not going to show you. The second page has a contents. As you can see, I've already made lots of mistakes. In a previous video, when I first started this particular bullet journal, I was including stickers, but towards the end, you'll see that I have no stickers, and that's because I just phased out of them because I didn't like them. I didn't like the headspace and the financial space and the storage space and the to-do list space that they were taking up, so I decided to do without them. On this page, it looks very different to how the last page looks, but that's okay because with a bullet journal you can always change your mind as the months change and as your needs change. Right away I have a daily, then I have a remember, 
Then I have some goals and then some reminders for mental health specifically. This is a sticky note space. At the start of the month, there was lots and lots of stickers on here telling me what to do. I've obviously removed them as I've done them or they've ended up in my journal. Then here is where I track my finances and then I have a coming ins and going outs because I like to track the things that I buy and the things that I declutter. On here is variables and on here is randoms. These are things that come up within the month that I need to either remember to save money for or just money I've already like spent. These are some ideas for the half term and these are my standard bills that are coming out. These are the things I end up buying but they're just random so there's no specifics on that one. This was what my April calendar looked like. I again was including a lot of stickers because I thought I needed them but as you can see I had a lot of things going on on different days and it just yeah it was really pretty. I've made a couple of mistakes and I've just rubbed them out and it's absolutely fine it's not really a big deal. This is my kind of tracker for April. I have my mood, my exercise, my sleep, my screen time, which is kind of random because sometimes I was including the computer and other times I weren't. Sometimes I was including Harry's screen time and sometimes I weren't. And then my water intake, which as you can see, was when I was like, oh, this is not very good. Let's do something about it. And then just some random stuff to remind me for next month. This is some notes, which I just, had because I didn't really know where to put them then some reflections so some yays some things I wanted to celebrate because I was really proud of myself and then some improvements I wanted to make for the following month and then again some more stickers then I started in May with just some dailies I thought I was going to toilet train but I didn't then some remembrance then some goals some more goals for mental health and some reminders and then some sticky notes I thought I was going to my driving license and it just it didn't end up happening and the same with the home move it didn't end up happening so that sticker is still there then I have my finances some reminders of what I could do in the bank holidays my variables which I did actually end up trekking this month I didn't do it last month and then some random things that I did that I hadn't scheduled at the beginning of the month that I ended up doing during the month and again my coming ins and my going outs this is my diary for May, more mistakes that I made, some things that I colour coded and things that I didn't. This is my mood tracker as well, I had my mood up here, my exercise, my sleep, my screen time which I then decided was just going to be for my phone. My water intake which, which I decided to drink a lot more of because I decided to quit caffeine I think halfway through the last month and as you can see, the result of doing that was that I drank a lot more water. Randomly, I also tracked my journal to see if I was doing it, and I really did a good job of that. And I also wanted to track my weight at the start of the month and see what it was at the end of the month. And now that I've just seen that, I've actually gone up since then. So that's pretty cool. And also my gym, which is over there. And also I started adding little notes of the exercise that I was doing. And if I was drinking I was going to the gym or if I had a tea or whatever which made me think about what I needed to do the following month. Again I thought I was going to do toilet training but I never followed through and again we have some yays and then we have some improvements and that's just really nice. Then on this page it's a bit different I decided I was going to write about how teas and lattes make me feel so that I had somewhere to look whenever I felt like I wanted some. Then I wanted some ideas for YouTube that weren't on my phone, so I created space and put them all down here. And then this was just a more detailed sticky note of what storage meant. In my last bullet journal, I was tracking my RuneScape because I was playing RuneScape. I haven't played it since December, but I still wanted to keep note of this just in case I wanted to go back to RuneScape and had an idea of what I wanted to do so that I was not on the game and like freaking out about not having a clue what to do. So I wrote it all down here, it seemed like the best place for it and then from July I had some spare space so I went back to here and I put in the books that I'm reading, what I rate them out of five and I decided to have watercolouring books I also tracked and I took note of how many pages there were in each one, the sizes, what I had coloured in already at the start of summer and then what I have at the end of summer and hopefully both of these will be full. Then in June I did the same thing except for the sticky notes I decided to write these down just as reminders for some reason. I had this random one that I needed to do and then again I decided to track my 
feels, my weekends, my variables, my randoms, my coming ins and going outs. You'll see lots of gaps in these because they're really, not these ones, these are just me being lazy, but these ones are really hard to like figure out because you'll get a Tesco's order, but then some of that will be food and hygiene. And it's just really hard to figure out. So I don't know if I'll continue with this one, but it's still a good thing to, to keep an eye on. And this is just the same as always. Then I have my moods, my exercise, my sleep, my screen time, my water, my caffeine, which was a new one that I didn't have last time. And I thought it'd be really interesting to see how much caffeine I have outside of the home because I don't have any at home at this point in this month. And also my water, look at that, compared to how we started. That is amazing. And my screen time, again, was just my phone. I did track my weight at the start, that's pretty cool. I went down a quarter of a pound. Oh well. And then we are in June. I think I got them the wrong way around. Yeah, I did. So again, it's just a colour code of everything that I was doing. Again, thought I was going to do some toilet training, but again, it just didn't work out. And again, I have my yays, I have some accidentals, and then improvements for the following month. And I did indeed take down one of the TVs. Then I have my monthly bills. I don't have the payments for them at the moment. I just have the, the names of them so that I remember. Then I have places to visit in the summer holidays. I live in Brighton, so you know, they're just ideas. And then this is a breakdown of my income. It's a bit random, it's in the wrong place, but it's just a, another visual reminder of what that would look like. This is July, which is the current month. It's the last day of July today. So the things are slightly changed on this page. I have my coming ins and going outs on this side because I needed more space. And this is much more filled with all the things I need to keep an eye out, which were the variables last month. A random reminder for YouTube, which was this month's video, which is bullet journaling. And then I decided to see if this would do any difference for me, but this layout has not worked either which is fine, it, it's, it's okay. And then just some randoms again that I need to work on. This is my July calendar. I had a lot going on, I was sick. I like looking at this calendar. Then I have my mood. It's uh, been an up and down month. I've got my exercise, I've got my sleep, I've got my screen time, and this was tracking mine and Harry's total screen time. And then in here, I was just writing about why it was in the yellow, so most of this was YouTube and editing. And then I have my water intake as well, which I've been tracking, which hasn't been that great because look, because look, I've uh, been drinking lots of caffeine, even though it's not been in the house. Then I have this, as I mentioned in my last video, I've kind of got a screen time addiction. This is screen time impacting my life and I wrote all the things down that I wanted to consider and think about when I'm on my phone. And then I have my reflections again, my yays, my try agains, and as you can see this is very full because I've been reflecting a lot more this month. Moving into August, as you can see I've got no stickers this time because I want to keep it that way. My layout is the same as last time, I just haven't finished it yet. My August calendar is already starting to get a little bit busy. There's reminders for YouTube for my next video. There's this that I need to put in my Septembers but I don't have a September board yet. Then I have my mood set up, then I have my movement set up, my sleep set up, my screen time, my water, my caffeine. And then I wanted to track how many protein shakes I had in a month and if it was worth it or not. This is a space for me to do about toilet training and I don't think this is gonna be used. And then again, I had another space where I talked about screen time. I talked about the things I could buy to help me reduce my screen time the things I could delete, the things I could do while I was out and about and at the gym, some other ideas, and then just a what's the fucking point, well, because that's why. Then I've got some YouTube plans, this is for this video, I don't know if I'm going to include it all, but here we go, another mistake I made, and then I've got my next YouTube plans, which is photos, there you go, sneak peek, and then I haven't got anything on this page yet, but I've already got my reflections and my yeas and tries again. And I think that's it. Yeah, so that's it in my bullet journal. I love the bullet journal because it's so much easier for me to do than just randomly write down on a page. I keep thinking about getting one of those journals where I could just write down how I feel randomly, keeping it like precise and to the point. 
But I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. I mean, as you can see, the thing about my bullet journal is that it's really imperfect. There's nothing pretty about it. Every month changes depending on what I need and I need my bullet journal to function. It gives me more motivation it not being perfect to use it more because I'm not under any pressure to make it look perfect. And so I think that's why I've been able to stick with it this time compared to all the times before where I've decided to give up and quit, even in a regular old journal. If my handwriting didn't look the same or if I used a different colour pen, then I got really down on myself and was like, this is not proper journaling and I quit. Whereas this, with all its imperfections, just make it look better. I like the fact that I keep everything together, although sometimes there are random things in random places. It's all within one notebook and I try as much as I can to number it on the front of the bullet journal so that I don't ever like lose sight of where things are. And it's really easy to find if someone else was to come and read or need my bullet journal. I like the fact that I keep track of a lot of stuff. I don't keep track of everything as my therapist pointed out, but I do keep track of a lot of things. And actually I forgot that at one point I was a little bit less weight than I am now. And although it sounds a bit like, hmm, like for me trying to gain weight, it was like a good reminder of actually yeah, I am making progress, even if it's really, really small. One of the bonuses of tracking so much stuff is that I get to reflect and be curious about the things that I've done each month. And like I did with the water, I found out that actually I was drinking so little water that I need to kind of figure out what I need to do so that I can drink a lot more water. And that's what led me to like think about giving up caffeine. And I was like, okay, well, how can I give up caffeine? Hmm, the kettle. Maybe if I do away with the kettle, then I would drink more water by default. And that's what's happened and that's what I do. And it's been amazing. The time it takes to fill in really depends on what I feel like doing. If I only have 10 minutes to give to my bullet journal or even less, just to quickly highlight my tracker, I'll do that. If I'm in the mood to be reflective, I'll do that. If I have time to write something else down, like a plan for a YouTube video or just a pros and cons list or just something else, then I'll also do that as well. The idea behind my bullet journal originally was to reduce my screen time because it is so bad and I'm really happy to say that it's actually really helping because when I do my bullet journal I try to be completely focused on it and do nothing else and that's so that I can think clearly with a clear head about what's going on. I'm obviously not a creative, I colour in colouring books and that's as far as it goes for me being creative so the bullet journal allows me to just have that little bit of creativity without too much pressure on myself and without too many supplies so I love that for me. I'm a huge colour coder. I could colour code everything every day for the rest of my life and absolutely enjoy it. It's not an OCD thing although I have OCD, it's just something that brings me joy and so the fact that I get to do this in my bullet journal just makes me really happy. I was one of those people who at college would always colour code. I just love it. I love understanding what I did really well versus what I didn't do well and what I need to think about. A6 is the best size for me. I tried A4 and I tried A5 and neither of those were my preference. I think if you're really into drawing, then do consider an A4. If you really need a compact size, consider A5. But if you just need something that needs like 30 dots going across, then get a B6. With that being said, I need to go out now and go to therapy. So I'll see you later.